Over the last several videos in our lecture series, we've been learning how we could transform sine and cosine functions uh, based upon vertical reflections, uh, stretches and compressions, shifting, uh, that is translation. So how, do you, how does one decode that if you're given a trigonometric function, a modified sine or cosine? Well, the idea is this is the template you should be looking at. If it's a sine wave, it's going to look like y equals k plus a sine of b times x minus h. Or if it's a cosine wave, the generic form is going to look like y equals k plus a cosine of b times x minus h, which you can assume b is a positive number because of the symmetry identities. If b were negative, you could you could deal with it uh, using symmetry, of course. So if your function, if your sine or cosine, it could always be put in the standard form right here. And then once it's in the standard form, you can start looking at the characteristics of the function. The coefficient of the sine and cosine, this is going to give you the amplitude, at least if we take the absolute value. The amplitude is going to be this number. If the number happened to be negative right here, that means you reflect it across the x-axis. If A was positive, no reflection happens. Okay? This number K that you're adding to either sine or cosine. It's outside of the function. It's not inside. It's not affecting the angle. It's just, it's outside there. This will be a vertical shift. You're moving up by K units, or if you're subtracting, that's actually equivalent to moving things down. Um, now, inside the function, if you're looking at the things that affect the angle, you're now stepped into the horizontal zone. Do, 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 do. In the horizontal zone, you have to be very careful because things might not work the way you think they do. In the horizontal zone, it's very important that things be factored. Uh, if things aren't being factored, it turns out your intuition, the learning you're, you're gaining right now, actually could, it could be contrary to what you expect. If you factor things, things life will be much simpler. You don't have to worry about phase shifts or anything like that. So if you factor it, so you have b times x minus h. This number h here will represent a horizontal shift. Do notice you expect a negative sign in the horizontal zone, but you expect a plus sign in the outside of the horizontal zone, right? So subtracting h moves things to the right. Adding h actually moves things to the left. And this number b right here affects the period. It'll change how frequent uh, the graph is oscillating. It affects the frequency there. So p equals 2 pi over b. And so if you, if you can remember these principles, then you could graph any sine or cosine wave. And let's do a few examples of that right now. So consider the function y equals negative 3 minus 2 sine of pi x. So you have to first check the horizontal zone. If there's no horizontal shifting going on, there's nothing being added or subtracted from the x, we, we shout for joy because that makes things a lot easier. Um, you don't have to worry about factor or anything. The only thing we check for is, is the coefficient of x positive. It is, so we move on. We're now in our standard form. So let's start looking at things. This coefficient of negative 2 right here, it affects the amplitude. We see that amplitude is going to equal 2, and we see there is a reflection that will take place on the graph. There's a reflection. What does this negative 3 do? This negative 3 represents there's going to be a vertical shift. Uh, so we're going to shift up. I guess I should, if we shift up by negative 3, but I should say it's much easier to avoid a double negative. Let's shift down by 3. In particular, our midline is going to take place at y equals negative 3. So pay attention to that. Well, what about the pi that's inside of this? So if that, that coefficient of pi affects the period, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by that number, which itself is pi, cancels out. We get a period there of 2. And so with this information about the midline, uh, the amplitude reflection, and the period, we're now ready to graph our function, uh, which we're going to graph it on the grid lines we can do right here. If I'm graphing a, a, a trigonometric function, whether it's sine or cosine, the first thing to do is to consider the midline. I like to draw it as a dashed line so that I recognize it's not actually part of the graph, but the midline should go in there. It takes place at negative 3. Okay? So then I want to graph one cycle of the function. Um, just one standard cycle. So we're going to go from 0 to 2. And mark that up if you need to. We need to go from 0 to 2 to complete one cycle of the graph. And in that one cycle, I pay attention to the five major points, the, the five points that coincide with the original quadrantal angles, 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. And now as you start changing the period, those can get a little bit more complicated, but basically you take your standard period and you slice it into five equal parts like we have right here. Um, as you go from 0 
go from zero to one to two. And then this, we get a one half right here and we'd get a three halves right here. We have those five equal parts going on right there. So remember our graph, I'm gonna write it down so we can see it so we don't have to move it all the time. So if we were to write it down here, the original graph, y equals negative three minus two sine of pi x, okay? So we changed it so that because of the period being changed, we're going from zero to two now, right? So we still have these five equal parts. The standard sign would go like, uh, excuse me, sign starts at zero, then to one, then to zero, then the negative one to zero again. So we're gonna have that same basic shape, except that it has been reflected across the x-axis. So we are going to start on the midline. Sign always starts on the midline. And every time you have an x-intercept, that means you should be on the midline. So zero, one, and two will be points on the midline. But because of reflections, we're actually gonna go down first, and then we're going to increase later. When we change the amplitude as well, the amplitude is now two. So that means we should go all the way down to negative five when we're at x equals one half. And we should go two above the midline, which is actually gonna be negative one. And so if we draw one, one cycle of the graph, we're gonna get this picture right here. So that's all that you have to do to draw one cycle. And then we're just gonna repeat this process for, for the rest of it. I mean, the graph goes from negative four to four. So it turns out we actually have to draw four cycles of the graph. Just copy and paste this thing over and over again, right? Uh, that's all that one has to do to draw the rest of this graph. So we're just gonna repeat the cycle like so. Okay, uh, we're just repeat it. And so we're gonna get a point right here. Just copy and paste it. I'm drawing these points to help me make sure I draw it correctly. And just connect these dots in the typical sinusoidal way. So, and now we have a pretty good graph of uh, this, our function y equals negative three minus two sine of pi x. And if we were to zoom out a little bit, I can compare this picture to a computer generated picture, which we can see it's, you know, my, uh, my, my drawing's a little bit sloppy, but I'd say it's pretty good. Really, it's good. Let's look at another example here. Let's consider the function y equals four cosine of two x minus three pi over two. So this now we have to be a little bit more careful because in this situation, the horizontal zone is not factored. We have to factor the horizontal zone. So this, this format right here is incompatible with what we wanna do. So we need to factor the two away from the x so that there's an x right here. But if we factor a two away from the x, we have to also factor the two away from the three pi halves, which then leaves behind a three pi force, like so. And so now that it's factored, we can correctly diagnose everything we need here. So we see, for example, the amplitude here is going to be a four. There's no reflections, there's no shifting going on. This two right here affects the period. We see the period is gonna equal two pi over two, which says the period is equal to pi. And then what does this three pi force do to us? This three pi force is going to be a, ch a horizontal shift to the right. So we see that H is gonna equal three pi force, like so. And so with this information, we can then start graphing our function, okay? We wanna graph a standard period, a standard cycle of some kind, for which we can see that since the cycle is Pi, uh, the period is now pi, we would, a standard cycle would be from zero to pi, like so. And we're trying to graph cosine after all, right? Remember it was four cosine of the, of the two times x minus three pi force. That's what we're trying to graph right here. It's cosine. So cosine starts at its maximum, then goes down kind of something like this. Uh, of course, I've changed the period right here, but that's the basic shape of cosine. So we're gonna start at a maximum, but because we have this shift going on here, um, let's think of the first original quadrantal points there. Uh, so the amplitude is a four, so we should have something like this, and then it comes down to an x-intercept, and then it comes down here, then here, and here. These points that I drew in blue right here, they would give us the non-shifted uh, cosine. This has the amplitude changes, the period changes, but it doesn't have the shift. So if three pi force is over here, we just need to move everyone three points down 
on our grid lines here. So we move this one over. We're going to move this one over. So we get a point right here. We move this one over. So we get a point right here. Uh, this one needs to move over. And this one needs to move over. So you get all these points there. If you don't like uh, the little blue marks, if you feel like it's just too cluttered, it, it's okay to remove them now because those were just supposed to be helper points. Uh, so we have these ones right here. And now you can draw this graph in the typical cosine manner. So you get something like this. It didn't specify domain, so we should just fill in the grid lines that are provided to us. So just filling in the rest of it, we get a picture that looks something like this. Like so. And so notice I'm doing this every other every other tick mark is I'm going to get an x intercept and then between them I get a maximum which goes all or or a minimum right I have to go up to 4 and down to negative 4 and we get something like this all right so this gives us the graph of the function we provided when you look at this graph you'll notice that the graph passes through the origin is this a cosine function or is it a sine function well our original our original instructions were, it was a cosine, but when you look at that thing, it kind of looks like it's a sine. And it, because of the co-function theorem, it turns out that every sinusoidal wave is a sine or a cosine. Um, it turns out you could represent the same graph in multiple ways. This is a result of trigonometric identities. All right, let's look at one last example of graphing this one. And this one's gonna be the whole enchilada. It's got everything going on right here. So we, see, we have to graph y equals four fifths sine of two x plus pi halves minus one. Um, it's not factored, so we do need to factor that thing. So we're gonna get a negative one plus five over four sine. We're gonna factor out the two, and then it leaves behind x plus uh, pi fourths, pi fourths, excuse me like so. And so this is now in our standard form. Um, and so the things we can see here is we have to graph a sine function. All right. Um, there's going to be a shift by negative one. So the midline, the midline is going to take place at negative one. The amplitude is going to be five fourths. And then we see that the period, the period is going to be two pi divided by two. So it's going to be a pi. And then finally, there's this horizontal shift of H by negative pi fourths. It's just gonna be a shift to the left. So now with this information, let's graph our function here. Okay, so let's think about the standard sine function. Standard sine function we should think of as going from like here to here to here to here to here, like so. Um, we need to modify this according to the, the, to the instructions we have now. But unlike the previous examples, you'll notice there's no grid line whatsoever. Uh, I, I, excuse me, there's no markings on the grid lines. Uh, we, we, see, we see the lines, the x and y axis. We see the little tick marks, but there's no labels here. This actually is good for us because we can actually make the label be whatever we want. Um, as we've learned before, graphing a sine or cosine wave, it's important to pay attention to the five special points. Uh, that normally coincide with 0 pi halves pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. Because the thing isn't labeled, I'm going to take these five points right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to make that just one period. This is going to be one period of my graph right here. And I'm just going to take that. My period's now a pi. So I'm going to label this point right here as pi. In which case, then this would be pi halves. Uh, we have pi fourths right here. We have three pi fourths right there. That's great. That is going to be our standard, just our standard period right there. Um, and then we can continue on, of course. Uh, you're going to end up with a three pi halves right there. And then the last point on the, on the line there would be a two pi. So that's nice. We can go label the other portions if we want to. The next thing I would consider is the midline. Uh, where should that be? It's going to be below the x-axis somewhere. It makes sense. We can just put it right here. That could be negative one. Uh, and that actually seems quite good with me. So I'm just going to keep the y scale what it is. So we're going to have here a 1 and a 2. This would be negative 1. This would be negative 2. And so the midline would then be this point right, or this line right here. And let's do it the other side as well. And so then our amplitude is going to be 5 fourths. 
So if we were graphing sine, we would start on the midline. We would then come up to our amplitude, which is 5 fourths. That's going to be a little bit above the x-axis. Then we come back down. Then we're going to come down here. And so we get a point a little bit below negative 2, then come back up. That's going to be the standard sine, which this has the correct period change and the, the correct amplitude. But it doesn't have the shift. We need to shift things over by to the left by pi fourths, but that's exactly this mark right here. This unit is pi four, so we need to move everything over by one point right there. So let's do exactly that. So it's like we started here. So we get this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point. And so that gives us one, one complete cycle of our graph. Then from here, we just copy the picture. We just do it over and over and over and over and over again. We just draw as many points as we need and just repeat the pattern given that this sign is just a periodic function. So we just switch between points above, points on, points below the midline like we're doing. And we would just connect the dots. It's very soothing, very relaxing. It's like watercoloring drawing a sine wave. And so this demonstrates how we can graph a sine function or a cosine function using all of these transformations uh, that we've encountered so far.